Hey everybody, on this is Troy Rawlings, and welcome to another episode of Meet the. And today we're meeting the beautiful, lovely coach, radio personality, best-selling author, Miss Kathleen Miner. How are you, Kathleen? I am awesome. Thank you very much for having me. How are you today? I'm good. Feels good. We were we were going through our technical profiles. We were not difficulties. We were working it's these new age, new age phone scenarios and yes, yeah. I catch you. It's beautiful where you are. Where are you? I am in St. Augustine, Florida, and yes, it's usually pretty beautiful here. It's warm most of the year, as you can imagine. Um, we're hoping for a little bit of a cool down at some point. I don't see one coming yet. Um, by cool down, I mean like if it can get like seventy, right. like, that'd be awesome. Like that would be <laughs> that would be a cool down. So, what's your average temperature down there in Florida during this fall period? Before it's something about Thanksgiving time comes in, and every if it's on the East Coast, it seems to get a little cooler. But Florida is a little different. It is. It is. So um, typically, maybe around 85. We've had a couple of cooler ones, but I mean, we've had Christmases where it's 95. So it's really hard to tell. I mean, it, it's hard to tell. When the cool weather comes, like everybody gets this burst of energy and everybody opens up their windows because we're closed up a lot because of the humidity. So your air is constantly running you know, to keep all the humidity out of the air and stuff. It just is what it is. But we get spoiled when the cool weather comes. We get really excited. Now, you're, you're I've, I've connected with you and looked at some of your social media and looked at what you're doing. You're doing a, an amazing job, first off. And I want you to, uh, before I get into a whole bunch of, because this would be a 30-minute personal interview, and I'd be like, another thing is, yeah. but you, you're not a fair weather person. It, does, it seems like you're usually upbeat and your energy is usually yeah. high. Yeah. How do you how do you keep that going? What is your regimen, your daily regimen? A quick a quick synopsis That's of what quick. you so daily. quickly every morning I get up and I think of something that I'm grateful for. It sounds easy, but do you know how many people do not do it? So many people do not do it. And that way you can change your mindset right away. And then I get up, I actually meditate and I journal and I don't sit still very well. So it's like five or ten minutes and I'm done. But I know that I have to do it because it keeps me realizing how grateful you are. I mean, people are even to be alive, right? And these are just things that I don't, I didn't do these things when I was younger. And so I, you know, when you, when you wake up in the morning and get up and you're just kind of in a mood and you go, and you go downstairs or somewhere and people look at you like, you're not getting that good morning because you're not giving it out. So I always make sure that I am, First of all, who I want to be, and that way I can present that that energy to my family, and that's where it starts. Really, is with my family because they're the ones I see first, and then right. I just continue it on. And um, you know what? It's such a happier way to live. And that's right. even when you have, I mean, every day is not going to be perfect. There are some days when just you just have down days. But the thing I love is that if if you have a lifestyle like this and I call it manifesting your life on purpose but if you live it as a lifestyle you always know what you can do to change your attitude you know and you just have to do it so that's kind of a quick routine though, that I do every day no, that's it. now would you call yourself because uh, it, it's thrown around so much nowadays the word coach or life coach but you're you're an author you're a radio personality and host and what would you, is there a title you would give yourself? You know, no. And I don't even call myself really a coach anymore because I don't really do, I do a couple of one-on-one -on -one coaching with clients that I've had, but I'm, I'm so busy just really, I, I'm just spreading the word that you can actually live a life like this. And that's really my goal. So that's my goal even with the books. That's my goal with the, with the charity, the nonprofit. And so that really takes my time, which I love. So, you know, the word coach, I do think it's thrown around a lot. When I was younger, if you were a coach, that meant you taught a sport or you were a coach of a team of some sort. Right. Um, or you were like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get it together. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, some coaches do that. But I think you're absolutely right. I feel like 
um, life coach and all of that has been sort of overused in some ways. But either way, I love connecting with people one on one. I started out coaching. Um, I was working full time at the Mayo Clinic and I was a single mom of two and I wanted to join a gym and I didn't have the money to do that because I was barely making ends meet like it was. But I from from in high school, I had had an eating disorder and I had promised myself I was going to be, you know, be healthier. And so what I did was I got certified to be able to teach like any kind of aerobics and also personal training. And so what I did was I went and got a job after work at a gym so I could have a free membership and I would train and I would, so during my teaching, I would work out too. And I'm talking about this because that was part of the coaching. Then when I started having to work on myself and my own self-perception and what I thought and felt about me, I started introducing that to my clients. And so we started working from the inside out. And because I knew for me, that I could be in the best shape ever on the outside. But if I didn't feel good about myself, it didn't matter. I really still didn't, I wasn't happy. So that was how, why I kind of got the term coach because I was, I actually was doing that kind of stuff. Um, and I really feel that you have to work on the inside too. I want to, I want to talk on that, that yeah. term you use, even though it so sounds self-explanatory, but self-perception, use mm -hmm. that in your, in your flow and your teaching and your book yeah what uh why is that so key for okay. you to get people on that vein of self-perception so first of all your self-perception is what you think and feel about you not what anybody else thinks and feels about you it's what you think and feel about you and a lot of people get that confused with self-care you hear that word a lot um you know self-care is taking care of yourself right maybe that means going out with friends maybe that means going for a massage, whatever, but that's totally different than self-perception. So self-perception is what you think and feel about you. And that is because it is the base of everything. So if you think about it, what you think about you, your self-perception dictates the chances you take, the choices you make, the relationships professionally and personally that you stay in and the ones that you get out of because you know that you're worth more than that or that's not your path. But if you have an unhealthy self-perception, meaning you don't think very highly of yourself or you don't think you're worthy of stuff, then you're going to radiate that out into your everyday life. So when somebody asks you a question or they bring an opportunity to you, you might be like, oh, okay, you know, you're going to shy away from it or you're not going to feel like you can speak up and really say what's on your mind. So self-perception, I believe, and it worked because I had to do this for myself because I did have an unhealthy self-perception in high school and it really changed everything for me because then I was starting to be able to follow my intuition, right? You hear about your gut or your intuition. People talk about, they call it gut usually, but when you have a healthy self-perception, you trust that. So that goes into, if I meet somebody and my intuition's telling me, you know, it's probably not a good idea, then I, I totally trust it. So I'm going to listen to it. And that was really why I dive into the teens as well, because it's so important. The earlier you can learn this stuff, right? I mean, you, we can probably both agree. The earlier we can it's, learn it's, this stuff. It's so detrimental. And and like you said, you mentioned just being transparent about your own life, having an eating disorder and how much that affects. And, you know, someone looks at you, oh, she's so yeah. beautiful and you're so beautiful. It's not usually the quote unquote ugly or very introverted personalities. It's usually the people who most people say, "Oh, they're doing all this great stuff," and they go home and they're like sick, or yeah. they're bulimic, or they're or they're cutting, or they're doing something like that. So I think it's so profound. Tell us more about your 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 daily. It's like a workbook, devotional. What would you call the book that you okay. have for teens? So um, it's a thirty day self perception makeover. So what it is is you go through thirty days, and every day it guides you and, and it allows you to uniquely make it your own. So we dig into your self perception. We really dig in to ask those questions, and then so after thirty days, in between those thirty days, usually around day three or four, they actually start to see shifts happening around them. So not only in their lives, you know, right. but around them, because you, when you start carrying yourself a different way and you start to really know that, you know what, you deserve great things and you have a healthy self-perception, those people that are a little bit uncomfortable with that, they don't know why they're, why they're kind of backing away from you. 
but they are. And you got to let them go. But things start to change around you. Different circumstances come in. You're presented with different opportunities and all of that stuff. So it is a 30 day program. We actually right now, um, we're, I say we, because I'm an editor that checks all my stuff, right? We all need mm -hmm. that. Um, I have a, a course coming out. So we also have an adult book and the men's book is actually already written. It's just going through the process of getting everything out. Um, but you know, the teens, it's really important because I know for me, and I'd like to hear about you too. I mean, even though you can come from an amazing family, but there's so many changes that go on inside when we're teens and we have it's, so much peer pressure. You know, 30 years later, I was telling somebody about this, just doing, like you said, doing the daily work and the self perception and things. 30 years later, I'm digging, I'm uncovering things that yeah. contribute to who I am now. And not just the good things, the very dark places that we cover up and we try to make excuses. And you're like, oh, that's just, that's been with me. Right. Like it's been with me. It happened when my parents left and all this stuff. You know, 30 years later, I was 14. I'm looking at certain things I was doing at 14 and at 44, they're still there. So it's like, how do you deal with that? Oh, that's that's a part of who you are. So what are you going to do with that? Who, yeah. who do you become now? And And we always hear perception is everything. So I think that's one of the most powerful things in the world is just starting with yourself. And it, it goes, it can go very. Oh, and your nonprofit. I want to definitely get to your nonprofit. And okay, yeah, people. definitely. We will. Uh, but I want to just mention something that came to my mind. We talked about this, you know, those things that have been with us since we were younger. A lot of those are limiting beliefs. So basically, right. and you've probably heard that before, but they're not even true, right? A lot mm -hmm. of these things that we put into our mind are stories that we've just kind of compiled, right? There might've been a situation that happened, but typically- That situation is not you. Right, yeah, so our situation, our subconscious wow. mind will like grow it, you know, into oh this and oh that, and that's how it keeps affecting our life throughout. And sometimes you just have to literally release it. And there's work that you can do to do that, but oh my gosh, what a weight off your shoulders that is. I mean, all of us have something, like I said, you know, I said, I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of family you grow up in. We all have something that sticks right. with us. Um, but also by getting rid of those things and really not letting them rule our lives anymore, or even be a part of it, then we can wake up and look at the great things because we all have things to be grateful for. And I even say too, some days I'm just like, okay, I'm grateful for the trees because it helps give us oxygen. Okay. Like sometimes you got to dig deep, right? Like, that's all I got. That's all you got. <laughs> That's the awesome. sun is shining. Uh-huh. That's it. Things that are bouncing just, like a puppy. But what that does is I call it opening your flow. It actually opens your flow, which starts to allow great things to come your way because you're on a different energy vibration, right? You're you're open, you're you're happy, you're not, you know, and you can keep saying, Oh gosh, the sun is beautiful. Oh, keep doing it, keep doing it. But even if you raise a little bit, a little bit, it makes a difference. Uh, okay, so I will tell you though, so hopeful handbag. That helped, that helped me just yeah, now. Just, um, get, forget. Not forget y'all audience, but I'm just taking this yeah. in. This, <laughs> this is help, my healing. It is, it is healthy. Yeah, we won't dig too far into yours. We don't want okay. you to cry on the air, but, right, right. Um, but then again, happy cries are okay. Uh, so hopeful handbags, yes, it is a nonprofit and it's one that I started and it's where we take hopeful one. Handbags. Hopeful handbags and um, hopeful has two L's at the end because it's full of hope. That's full of hope. So hopeful handbags, we take one loved handbags and we fill them with necessities and things to make women feel amazing. And we donate them to women getting back on their feet again due to domestic violence and other detrimental situations. And so mm -hmm. we do this to give hope, right? Just to raise hope because like we were just talked about raising your energy vibrations and getting you in a different place. Even when they look in these bags, these are amazing bags because these aren't just handbags that people want to throw away. Like these are handbags that women have in their closet that they know they can get another one. And so they're more than happy to donate it. And so they get excited, they get happy. And that little bit can give them hope, right? Because they know somebody cares. But also what we do is we raise awareness that domestic violence is real, uh, yes. that it happens everywhere in 
every socioeconomic background does not matter. It happens. And that the kids are affected as well. Even if the kids are not being abused, which sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't, it detrimentally, it affects them for their life, you know? So we also, um, that there's help. There are so many, I've talked to different countries because we have some going now in the United Kingdom and Barbados in the US and we're starting in Canada, but every shelter that I have talked to in every state, they have help that's free. So even if like, say somebody is being abused and they get out of that situation, they can, they have free services. They can use the court services. They can use the counseling. Their kids can use the counseling and they don't have to stay at the shelter to use it. So like if somebody's staying with the friend, they can still use those services. And we're just trying to make sure too, that people know that it's out there. Also, another thing I don't think people think about is that if you're in an, a situation where abuse is happening, a relationship or whatever, They'll also help you come up with a plan, a safety plan, because sometimes they don't feel like they can leave right away. And so they can call, nobody's gonna come get you right then, you know, I mean, it's, you don't have to worry, but they'll help you come up with a plan. And so for me, and the reason why I'm so passionate about this is, you know, my mom had me when she was 15, my dad was 17, and I'm telling you this because they are still together and they are like the most amazing people ever. And we lived in South Florida and we lived across the street from my grandparents. And my mom came from an abusive family. My grandfather used to abuse my grandmother and the kids. And so when I was about five is my earliest memory. I remember she would always run across the street and kind of take care of the situation, you know, to get things calmed down. And she has siblings that are my age, mine and my sister's age. So they would come across the street and we'd be all standing there at the chain link fence, just waiting for it to calm down. And then we would end up taking my grandmother to the emergency room and it was just a routine. And I would always think sitting there in the back seat, I always thought, first of all, why does she keep going back? Because this keeps happening. And also like I'm living a life across the street it's nothing like this. So I know this isn't normal. What's like, what's going on? Cause my parents mm. raised my sister and I to be half glass full girls, you know? And so anyway, that stuck with me for years and years and years. Um, I, I, my grandmother passed away about 30 years ago and I know that had something, you can only take so much. Right. Um, and my grandfather, he passed away about six years ago. And I know he's looking down on me saying, keep doing what you're doing. Cause he knew what he did wasn't right towards the end of his life when he stopped drinking and all of that. Um, so anyway, that's my passion behind it is just for these women to know that there's hope and they don't have to stay in those situations. And so we can all, we all can't do everything, but if we can do our part and whatever we're passionate about, I feel really strongly about that. And so that's how, that's what hopeful handbags is about is about raising hope. We also give to I mean, the homeless I and mean, we, we also donate, there's a program where they, um, women that have gone through hard times and they're getting their biological mothers and their kids are in foster care and they're trying to get their lives back in order. Um, you know, all different kinds of reasons. So that's what Hopeful Handbags is the basic. I love it. About. I love it. So how can people get in touch with you? You're, I know you're manis- manifesting. Magic every day on, magic on every Instagram. Day. Yeah, manifesting magic every day on Instagram. On Instagram. Like I said, you manifest your life every day anyway, so why not do it on purpose, right? That's why right. not do it on purpose? Um, and then, of course, my my website, Kathleen at KathleenMeyer.com has all of that. Um, also, HopefulHandbags.org. So there's a lot of different ways. And my name is spelt differently, but, you know, you'll you'll find it. Um, so, but it's, so I'll just say it's Kathleen, C-A-T-H-L-E-N-E. And... Um, I know that was really fast. And you'll but. see this post everywhere. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on the IGTV. We'll we'll have this interview all over the place so people can be in touch with you as well. But you're amazing. Thank you. I have really enjoyed this. Thanks so much for having me. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you for taking some time out. Kathleen Miner, everybody. Check out on Instagram at Manifesting Magic Every Day. And also we'll have our website links as well. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.